Hello YouTube! Today we're here to talk about Parsec and more specifically how to get the most out of Parsec. And for those of you that don't know, Parsec is the absolute best game streaming solution available. It lets you take games from a high powered uh, PC that's in your home or even a, a cloud PC that's hosted somewhere else and stream them at 60 frames per second with virtually no input lag or latency to something else. Uh, it could be a, a lower powered computer, a laptop, uh, a Raspberry Pi, even an Android device, and it does it flawlessly. And uh, with all that said, you know, as cool as Parsec is, it's not always plug and play. Sometimes there's some things that need to be adjusted to really get that flawless experience. So this video is going to show you how to achieve that. It's going to give you tips and tricks and just different ideas for getting the most out of Parsec. So with that said, let's jump into the first part. And uh, the first part is going to be for the user that maybe has Parsec installed but hasn't achieved that flawless experience. So I'm going to show you how you isolate what's holding you back and how you tweak it to get the most out of it. So let's start. Um, now for you, you know, those of you that have used Parsec for a little bit, the client that I'm showing on the screen might look a little different than what you're used to. That's because Parsec released a brand new client for the computer today. And uh, this is its look moving forward. But essentially under the hood, the options are largely the same. So let's jump right into it. So we're going to go into the client and we're going to click on this and go into settings. So right now I'm on my client machine, meaning that this is the device that's being streamed to. Um, the gaming computer is elsewhere. So when you're tweaking settings for your streaming session, you're going to do that on the client, not on the host, not on the gaming PC. So let's start by going through the settings. Um, to narrow down what's holding your stream back, you want to start by building a minimalist streaming profile. And that basically means that you're just going to tweak everything down to the lowest setting. And we'll start with the, the client itself. So when you go in here, you're going to go to video quality and you're going to keep it on lowest latency. When you go into decoder, you definitely want to keep it on accelerated. That basically means it's going to use hardware decoding. Uh, bandwidth limit, you're going to change from auto to five megabits. So we're going to keep it nice and light on the network. Streaming resolution, you're going to move down and you're going to choose 1280 by 720 or 720p. Um, frame limit, you're going to click on it and you're going to choose 30 FPS. And down here, uh, windowed mode, leave it on borderless. V-Sync, we're going to turn to off. Immersive mode can stay off. And then overlay is really just your personal preference. If you have this turned on, it's going to put a little button right up here at the top of the screen that allows you to manage Parsec. So you can click on it and end your streaming session or change the setting or whatnot. Um, so that's up to you. Personally, I leave mine off. I have a different way of handling that. So once you've made those changes to your Parsec client, the next changes are going to be made in the game itself. And now that you've got your Parsec client on your lowest possible settings, you want to go into your game and you basically want to do the exact same thing. So if you look, I'm using Destiny 2 as an example. So we're looking at the video settings for Destiny 2. Um, you want to start off by making sure that any game that you're streaming to Parsec is on some sort of windowed mode. So preferably windowed full screen, borderless window, you know, whatever the game offers. Um, that's going to give you your lowest latency possible and your best streaming experience. So looking at that, we're going to do that. Um, for your resolution, you want to go ahead and set that down to the lowest possible, um, lowest reasonable possible. So like in this case, we're looking at 720p. Uh, V-Sync, we're going to have off. Field of view, you're welcome to play with that a little bit. You know, something in the 80s is pretty reasonable for this. Um, and then moving down to the meat of it, looking at the graphics cost, uh, quality, you want to make sure that anti-aliasing is off, occlusion, all these things are off. Now with Destiny, this you want to have this on lowest, uh, low, low, shadow quality lowest, depth off, environment low, um, character low. Now this, I believe with this, medium is the lowest, medium again is the lowest, and then your motion blur is off, your wind is off. Uh, render resolution, you can leave at 100 for your game. HDR, if the game supports it, needs to be off. And then these extra effects can be off as well. Once you've done this, you want to go ahead and test streaming one more time. And you want to make sure that when you test your stream, that doing these low settings allows you to have 
a really, really smooth experience with really low latency. So if you achieve that, you know that the issue that you're working through is based on settings, you know, in you know, the combination of settings and parsec and in the game rather than something with your network. Now, if you still have issues, you know, even after setting all this stuff on the lowest possible, then you're likely looking at a network issue. And we're not going to cover those things right now. Um, we'll move into that at a different time. But assuming that that solved your issue and that your stream is now really smooth and your latency is really low, we're ready to move on to the next stage. And uh, the next stage is to move back to the Parsec client and uh, begin moving things up little by little. Now, coming back to Parsec, now that we've determined that your game streams really smoothly with really low latency, with all the settings turned on low, now it's time to start tweaking things up a little bit to determine you know, what the maximum levels are that your computer and your network can sustain to have, you know, to still continue to have that smooth streaming experience with ultra low latency, but also have better quality. You know, we don't want to keep it on the cruddy video quality that we just had. So going back to Parsec, we're going to start tweaking stuff up little by little. So for video quality, we're going to leave it on lowest latency. Uh, Decoder is still going to be accelerated. Uh, bandwidth limit, we're going to go ahead and step up to 10 megabits. So we're going to double up. And for streaming resolution, we're going to go ahead and set it on 1920 by 1080. Um, that's assuming that you're using a, a 1080p device or screen to stream with. You want to step it up to the real resolution of your device. Um, frame limit, we can go ahead and move up to match refresh rate. So for most devices, that's going to put us at 60 FPS. Now moving down to these options, we're really just going to leave the rest of it alone. And uh, that should give us an incremental step up. So we haven't completely maximized everything yet, but this should allow us to move on to the game and do a, a little more tweaking. Now that you've set Parsec to 1080p and you've bumped up your streaming bandwidth a little bit, you're ready to start making some small changes to the game to improve things and just continue testing. So you're going to start by going up to the resolution. You're going to set it back to 1080p and test the game at this point. So start streaming it. Make sure the things at full resolution are still you know, really smooth in terms of streaming and that you still have your ultra low latency. Once you've confirmed that that's true, we're ready to actually tweak the game and get it to where it's going to stay. And uh, we'll go through that little by little. So with the field of view, I would still encourage you to keep it in the 80s. Um, keeping the field of view low tends to help Parsec in terms of frames per second and stuff like that. Uh, moving down to this, there's a couple things that you want to be very, very careful with. Um, a lot of games have what are called overlay settings, meaning that when the setting is enabled, it's actually adding a form of an overlay on the game itself. And overlay settings can really impact how Parsec performs. So it's going to be noticeable in terms of frames per second for streaming, and it's going to be noticeable in terms of your input lag. It's going to really add to it. So things like when we look at, at uh, Destiny as an example, things that are going to add to that are going to be these down here. So render resolution, you leave it at 100. Um, HDR, you want to leave off. The chromatic aberration, you definitely want off. Film grain, you want to leave off. So these are, all, these are all overlays right here. Up here, it's going to be the same. So we want to leave the wind impulse off, leave motion blur off. Um, light shafts are another one that tend to be an overlay. With uh, Destiny, you can only leave it on medium, so we're going to leave it on medium. Um, the shadow distance, I tend to leave on medium as well. Uh, moving up here, the depth of field tends to be one of those settings, so you want to leave that on off. And looking at the rest of it, um, ambient inclusion, I tend to leave off as well because that can be another one. But everything else, you're welcome to tweak up to normal levels, You know, the stuff that your computer would support by itself without streaming. So you can go back to anti-aliasing, put it on a higher setting. You can go to the textures and put that on 16. Um, texture quality, for me, I'm putting it on highest. Shadow quality, highest. Uh, we talked about depth of field. The detail di distance, you can, you know, for me, I can put on high. Um, character detail, high. Foliage, high. And that's basically it. So if we go through that, we've disabled anything that can create an overlay and we've maxed out the settings that our device can support otherwise. And at this point, you want to do one last test, you know, make sure that we're still streaming really smoothly, still have the really low latency. And if it's true, 
you can go back to Parsec. So now that you've maxed out your game, you know, meaning that you've got the perfect settings in your game, um, you've made sure that you've identified anything that could hold Parsec back, you have a couple final options in Parsec itself that you're welcome to play with to try to get even more out of it. So going back over here, I, you can change video quality if you're on a LAN, you know, meaning that your gaming PC or host and your client device, you know, meaning you know the, the Raspberry Pi or whatnot, is on the same network connected to the same router, you're welcome to go ahead and put this on highest definition. So that means that the video quality of your stream is going to be the absolute best possible. Um, moving down here, you can go down to bandwidth limit and set it on auto. If you do that, Parsec is going to pay attention to your computer and your network and it's going to use as much speed as possible without breaking things up. So leaving it on auto is a good play. Now streaming resolution, um, you're welcome to leave this on 1920 by 1080. You could also put it on auto detect. That's worked well for me as well. Refresh rate is already maxed out. Window mode, you want to leave on borderless like we talked about. Now VSync is something that you may want to utilize. So it, as you've been testing, if you've noticed that you've had some screen tearing issues, some lines on the screen as you've streamed, you're welcome to go ahead and go into Parsec and switch this on. Um, an important note here is that you don't want to turn on VSync in the game itself. So if you notice any issues like this, you want to make this change in Parsec versus in the game. Now part two of my tips and tricks for Parsec involves how Parsec streams. So right now, what you're seeing is what you will typically see when you start a Parsec session. So if this is my client and I'm streaming from another desktop, you're basically going to see the desktop of the computer that you're streaming from. So like the this is the gaming PC's desktop. And that's great if you're sitting at a client that has a keyboard and a mouse and, and allows you to use that normally. But if you're using a controller, you know, whether you're sitting at a device and you just want to play with a controller or you've got a device that's hooked up to a TV, having your desktop be what you interact with when you're using Parsec isn't the easiest thing to manage. So with that in mind, this next tip is for people that use controllers. And uh, I want to show you a couple controller interfaces that work well with Parsec. Now, most of you are probably familiar with Steam Big Picture. Um, pretty common interface you know used by a lot of other streaming services and devices and it's great it gives you a lot of functionality um, you know, it gives you some powerful options like uh, you know the storefront and friends and all that good stuff and uh, it's adequate you can definitely use that with Parsec and it streams just fine but I want to bring some attention to another option that some of you might not be aware of and it's a product called Big Box and that's what you're seeing right now on your screen um, Big Box really stands out because it's completely customizable. So what you're seeing is my setup for big box on the screen. Um, I've got the initial screen divided up in terms of systems. So you can go through the systems. You know, I even have a link for Steam Big Picture mixed in just for fun. And uh, I can choose any system that I want. And uh, you know, for example, go to computers and it's all just really divided up nicely, you know, with nice videos and you know, makes it really easy to get into the app and do whatever I want. And it's completely controller friendly, which makes it really, really accessible and uh, just great. And so, you know, computers are an example. You know, I've got CMU set up with uh, Wii U games. You know, just some examples with that. And uh, you can do that with any system. And, you know, Parsec as a service, you know, one of its strengths is that it allows for uh, remote couch gaming. So you can virtually hand the second controller for a game to somebody else and stream your system to them and let them enjoy your great streaming quality with low latency and play with them. So obviously it's a great match for emulators like the SNES and the GameCube and, and so forth. So this is just my setup. There's a lot of other themes that can be applied to Big Box. So you can choose a different look if you like it. Um, this is just mine. And uh, just for fun, I threw in a button for Parsec. When I hit this, it brings up an option to stop the stream. So if I hit that, it, it shuts down the stream and that uh, just gives me control from the controller, which is what you're really looking for out of a controller interface. And uh, you can get Big Box online. It's 20 bucks to have. And uh, I think it's worth every penny with what you get out of it. And it's the best possible 
streaming interface in my opinion but there's other ones out there you know the bottom line is that if you're going to use a controller take advantage of interfaces like this to make it really easy to control parsec from a controller only now my last tip is mainly going to be for couch gamers and this won't apply to everyone but this has been useful enough to me that i felt that it deserved to mention so if you're a couch gamer meaning that your your client device is plugged into a TV and you're largely just using a controller to control things, there are going to be times when you need to have a little more control than that. So more than what the controller can do by itself. And for that, there's a couple things out there. So the first one is a product called Remote Mouse. And the strength of Remote Mouse is that it gives you a mouse and a keyboard that you can control from your phone. And it basically just lets you, you know, have control over those details on your screen without having to get up and interact with the computer directly. So without having to go to the, to the host computer and do something. And uh, as you can see, it gives you a keyboard, um, gives you a trackpad that you can control, and it's just really powerful. And on top of that, it works for everything. So it works on iOS, Android, Windows, Mac, Linux. So regardless of how you place Parsec, there should be a version of this that works for your device. So I find that this is invaluable. Um, I pull it up all the time. I use it to start Parsec sessions. I use it to open up my controller interface. You know, sometimes I customize something while I'm in a streaming session. It really works well for those reasons. The other product that I find to be helpful is just some sort of remote desktop because sometimes having, you know, that remote mouse isn't quite enough. Sometimes you need to, you know, zoom in on something and see more detail um, or just have more control or control another screen or, you know, whatever. And uh, for me, I love to use Chrome Remote Desktop for that purpose. It uh, plays well during a Parsec streaming session, so it doesn't interfere with it or, or close it down or anything like that. Um, it's easy to get into the devices. And again, I can, I can pull up my phone and completely control that experience remotely from the phone without getting up and interacting with a computer or anything like that. So there's other remote desktop products out there. You might have another one that you like. Um, this is just my personal favorite because of how it interacts with Parsec and how easy it is to use. But if you're playing on your couch, tools like this can really mean the difference between staying on the couch and enjoying your games and getting up and tweaking stuff all the time. You know, I, I'm sure there are many of you that have had the experience of running back and forth between rooms because something went wrong with your stream. This gives you a way of correcting things without having to leave. And that's basically going to be it for this video. I hope that the ideas and the tips and tricks that I shared here are helpful. I hope that I've enabled more of you to have that super smooth streaming experience that I've been enjoying for some time now. And uh, if you guys have any questions, feel free to leave comments below. I'll do my best to address anything that you guys throw out at me. And until next time, you guys have fun.